Hello there everyone and welcome to another episode of Kitchen Table Electronics Repair with UXW Bill. What I have for repair tonight is actually going to make up a few different installments of the Kitchen Table Electronics Repair series. This is the Realistic by Radio Shack TM152 AM and AM Stereo Tuner. And this thing is a one-trick pony. All it does is allow you to receive AM broadcasts on the so-called standard broadcast band as we call it here in the US. And maybe you call it that too worldwide. I don't know for sure. I've been kind of half-heartedly looking for one of these, but not really aggressively. They do show up on eBay and other places from time to time. Well, YouTube user VWestLife got one that worked off of eBay, and he said, I have this one that doesn't work. I'll send it to you for the cost of postage if you would like to have it and potentially fix it. I took him up on his offer, and indeed, this tuner does not work. If you turn it on, you don't even get so much as a dial light because the dial light is actually burned out and the only sign of life that it ever gives you when you turn it on is the signal strength LEDs flash briefly and then they go off. So there's definitely something wrong here. Now here the insides of the tuner are and this is pretty much what you would expect to see in any AM tuner of any kind of decent quality or even fairly basic such as a simple boombox or something like that. This thing accepts connection of an external antenna, but it also has an internal ferrite loop stick for basic reception purposes that might work just fine if you're in an area that's served by several strong local AM stations. You have the variable capacitor there, you have the various front end circuitry and the power supply stuff over here like a 7809 voltage regulator. You have the Sanyo LA1245 AM electronic tuner. And there were two versions of this marketed back in the AM stereo heyday of the 1980s. The LA1245 was the basic tuner, and the LA1247 was actually marketed for AM stereo applications because it had an alleged better, to sig better signal to noise performance ratio than the LA1245. I don't know how true that is because I've looked at the data sheets for them both, and it looks to me like their specs are basically identical all the way across the board. So I don't really think it's a big deal that Radio Shack or whoever designed this for them used the lesser part because I just don't really see any difference. Over here you have the Motorola CQAM Quadrature Amplitude Modulation Decoder and that is called into service when you are receiving an AM stereo broadcast and it recovers and splits out to the analog audio outputs the original stereo broadcast that you're hearing if your AM station is actually broadcasting in stereo. If they're not, it does nothing. Now YouTube user VWestLife mentioned to me that he was using an external QAM decoder, a newer revision of the Motorola chip, when something went wrong and some voltage ended up going where it should not. And ever since then this tuner hasn't worked. Well, in this case, what I did to try and diagnose the problem is I got a hold of the data sheet for the LA1245IC and I started poking at it with a frequency counter that's built into my multimeter. What I discovered is that while its oscillator is running, nothing else is going on. You see, like many other receivers, this is a super heterodyne set. And it's probably better that you look this up if you're seeking an explanation of that because anything you can find online that's correct and accurate is likely to do a better job of explaining it than I am and there won't be any disinformation or misinformation involved. So rather than my getting it wrong and allowing you all to laugh out loud at me, I encourage you to look it up if you want to understand more about the circuit. But basically what you have going on in a super heterodyne set is you have this intermediate frequency that is also generated and mixed with the signal that you're trying to receive. And if, if my understanding is correct, it's that mixed signal that goes on to the rest of the signal circuits in the set, and that makes it easier to design a set that receives what you're interested in, because instead of trying to hit this moving target across a wide range of potentially receivable frequencies, you only have to worry about picking up the mixed signal that is generated as a result of the heterodyning process. Now over here I have the Medusi Pro 1K High Fidelity Wideband AM Stereo Tuner and I will not hesitate to say to any of you although this thing's audio fidelity is remarkable its tuning is an absolute nightmare it is a piece of expensive junk and I wouldn't recommend that you purchase one because if you're not happy with it the people who make this thing they're not going to stand behind it at all. But what it does use, it too uses the Sanyo LA1245 AM electronic tuner. And so, since this still works, I haven't gotten that mad at it just yet, 
I made the same measurements on the same pins of the chip, and I discovered that where there were things happening here, there was nothing happening here except for the local oscillator portion of the IC. So I'm afraid that the LA1245 IC has taken a hit, and so as such I'll need to replace it. Now there are other things that need to be done in this little tuner as well. The uh, pilot light for the uh, dial is no longer with us. Um, it's burned out, and in fact this one needs to have it replaced because the wires are there. I'm thinking of replacing that with, an, with a white LED because it'll run cooler and it'll last longer. Just put a, a series dropping resistor in there and then mount the LED in the front panel. I'm really not 100% sure how that's done, excuse me, because I haven't had the front panel off of this thing, but I would assume it can't be too hard. What is going to be kind of annoying is removing the LA1245 because as you can see, Radio Shack's designers opted to put this big old wheel here and no matter how you have this thing positioned it's almost impossible to get clean access to all the pins of the LA1245. Restringing dial strings is not one of my favorite activities so I'm hoping I can get away without doing that. But I'm hoping to loosen this wheel from the uh, variable capacitor drive shaft, lift it up and hopefully carefully pivot it out of the way just enough that I can get my desoldering iron in there. Now there are some interesting things on this board. There's a little piece here, I think that's a little capacitor sitting there on two pins of the LA1245. And there's also something over here that looks hand done. I don't know if this would have been rework done further down the line or what this is. But there's a jumper wire going to the QAM decoder there. There's a little tiny resistor and there's another jumper wire there. And there's a tiny little trace cut right there that you can just see at the tip of my fingernail. So I'm not sure if that was factory rework or what that was. There is something else that will have to be done to this thing to fix it up cosmetically. Its cabinet's not in too terribly bad of a shape, but it needs new rubber feet because the rubber feet that are on it are rotten. Well, what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is I'm going to go ahead and get this little wheel out of the way, hopefully without destroying the dial stringing, because like I say, I don't enjoy fiddling with that. Now here are my replacement parts. This is a new LA1245 and I'm hoping this is good because the seller that sold this to me did not stick this in a uh, ESD handling regulation compliant piece of uh, electrostatic discharge uh, proof material. Instead it's just stuck into a regular old piece of styrofoam which can have a bad tendency to attract and hold a static electricity charge. So hopefully that little, uh, that little IC hasn't been hurt. Now this over here is a 20 pin socket for said IC and the reason I'm doing this, sometimes doing something like this in a tuner or something where the operating frequencies are sensitive is not really a good idea, but the reason I'm doing this is mainly one of convenience because if, if I ever have to replace it down the road, I don't want to have to take that little wheel out of there again. You know, I figure it's not going to be much fun to do it right now. If I ever have to do it again down the road, I'm probably not going to enjoy it. Well, I've put it off long enough. Time to move that wheel out of the way. All right, and there's the old LA1245 IC, successfully removed from the set. Now it's time to go get the soldering iron, put the socket in, and put this little fella back in place. Now there, the socket has been installed. It's time to go ahead and pop the new LA1245 in. Put the little screw holding the tuning wheel back in there, and hope for the best. Alright, there's the new chip in its socket. Everything's hooked up and ready to go again, so let's turn this thing on and see if we get any kind of reception. Now, I don't think the results will be too good because here at night there tend to be a lot of AM radio stations that step on one another. But let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see if there's any kind of a response out of it on the tuning dial and the signal strength meter. And so far there is not, so something is not quite right here. I should be getting something. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm pretty sure of my diagnosis. I really think this other IC is bad. So I think I'm going to have, be having a conversation with an eBay seller. I'll tell you what, I've got a way to test this out, although it's taken a chance on the health and well-being of my Medusi tuner. I'll just borrow the LA-1245 out of it and see what happens. 
because I know it's good. All right, there it is. Let's go ahead and try this. See if the results are any more promising this time. All right, power on. Aha! There's some evidence of reception right there. We certainly didn't have that before. I'm going to need an audio amplifier. Okay, now just so there's no question about anything, not only did I run and go get an audio amplifier, but also went over to the Roach Palace and grabbed the Talking House AM transmitter. And as you can see here, I have got strong reception, although the position on the dial differs a little bit from the reality of the frequency that I'm using. But if I go ahead and turn this up here, I've only got the very faintest of audio coming through that speaker. Now just to verify that the transmitter is indeed working, I'll flip this thing over to its AM tuning range. We can go so we're definitely transmitting, but there's something funny going on here because I'm not getting anything but very faint audio out of this unit. So I'm going to do a little unorthodox troubleshooting here, and what I'm about to do, I strongly suggest you absolutely do not do this unless you understand the risks and the hazards of doing so. Basically, I'm going to go in here near the audio output section of the tuner and the QAM decoder, and I'm going to take a moistened finger and I'm going to run it along the pins of that chip and see if I can provoke a response because I really think there's got to be a problem over there. I'll go ahead and turn up the amplifier so you can hear it here, and let's see what happens. Again, I recommend that you do not do this because it is a dangerous thing to do. Provoking some kind of a response there. All right, I haven't really found anything too interesting yet, but let's let's just keep trying here. Definitely getting fits and spurts of audio out of it. So some of the circuitry over here in this audio block is going to have to be examined for other problems. Unfortunately, I never could get it to give me a good clean audio output when I had the Handycam running, so you'll just have to take my word for it. I really think that some of the uh, Handycam's own operating frequencies or their harmonics thereof were getting mixed in with the uh, fact that I was holding the Handycam in the other hand, that some of its signals were going through my body and messing this thing up and causing it not to work as well as it did when I had the camera turned off. Well, let's see, what have I learned tonight? Well, I've learned that I have two bad LA1245 ICs, so I've got to go back to the eBay seller on that, because when I borrowed the one that works out of that hunk of junk, this thing came to life and started tuning. But somewhere between the LA1245 and the Motorola QAM decoder, something's getting lost, and I'm not quite sure where the problem lies yet. Obviously, I'm going to have to test some more of these components in more detail before I can say for sure that the QAM decoder IC is bad. I was told that it works, but you know, trust but verify as they say <laughs> in my particular line of work. So stay tuned because there will be more to this. I'm not done yet, especially since it seems like I'm very close to having this thing licked. And then I can put it behind me, put it back together, and enjoy what will hopefully be a fixed realistic TM152 AM stereo tuner. Thank you for watching, and if you have a comment, feel free to leave one below.